Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is Julia Widdup with Talk Story Media, and we have a shaman from Denmark. She's in Sweden today, and she's with us to talk about drums, drumming, shamanism. Tell us, uh, Suzanne, how did you get involved in this business? What inspired you to become involved in this work? Well, hi, Julia. Hi. Um, thank you for inviting me to this um, um, video uh, interview. Um, well, uh, I'll try to make a long story short. Um, at a very, very young age, um, I went to Greenland with my parents. Um, and on this trip, um, I, be I, I became a sled dog, not a, a live one, but a a spirit sled dog. And I kept talking to this uh, um, sled dog um, uh, on, when we got back home to Denmark and uh, it was around and um, I played with it and I talked with it and I looked for it and I couldn't find it. And I cried when my mother sat on it. And, um, but my parents were embarrassed about this. So they were <laughs> patronizing me and and I think for that reason, uh, also at an early age, um, it disappeared. Uh, but then later, um, yeah, then, well, my, my family is sort of atheistic. And um, I have, since very early teens, been searching. Um, I needed to have body, mind, and spirit in my life. I needed to have some kind of, sp of spirituality. So very early, I joined um, uh, people who were into um, Tibetan Buddhism, and I took uh, refuge with an old um, uh, with an old lama called Kalu Rinpoche at the age of sixteen. Uh -huh. uh, my parents were terrified, of course, <laughs> um, but it was harmless. And uh, well, I had this uh, Tibetan practice up until I was introduced to the shamanic journey um, at the age of, um, in the early 20s, yeah. And on my first journey, uh, my sled dog came from a mountain pass back to me, uh, and I was really touched. And then from there on, uh, the shamanic path and the work with the spirits have been just like coming home for me. Uh, I really felt find, found the shelf uh, where I could have my spirituality in spite of my upbringing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, I have had, then my practice have been off and on. I have had ordinary work for many years as a social worker. I have been teaching um, uh, oriental dance, belly dance and tribal dance for more than 25 years and I have had a daughter. And so my shamanic practice have been a little, uh, a lot here and then nothing. And then again, mm -hmm. uh, up till I met Eric, my husband, who was also into uh, shamanic practice or, more or less, um, and after the first year of being together, he invited me on a drum building workshop in Norway. And uh, it was a five day workshop um, where um, the, uh, the workshop was built up this way that it was a combination of craftsmanship and uh, uh, shamanic journeys, always back yes. journeying and, and then to the handcraft and then journeying and to the handcraft. And then I have been doing artwork also uh, most of my life. And um, then uh, I, I found out that I actually always have been working with spirits uh, doing artwork. I didn't know that, it was just the way I worked. Um, and then um, for many years, I, I kicked Eric on his leg and said, now start doing some drums because he was told to build drums in this workshop from the spirits. And um, finally he made up his mind and started to build drums. 
And then I had so much inspiration and I started making rattles. Nice. Um, and um, and um, it's for me to do rattles, um, as an, as a, to be a shamanic artist is somehow um, like being a tool uh, of the spirit. The spirits are using me to make these creations. Um, and I have many examples and I'll try to find some like, um, well, if we're driving through a, a wood, um, I might say to Eric, hey, stop, there's a route calling for me. And then I get out of the car and I go in the route, maybe 50 uh, meters. And uh, then I come back with a perfect piece. Mm -hmm. that I found. <laughs> And um, and then also we use uh, roadkill, and as I wrote, uh, no animals are killed for the purpose of um, of uh, creating these tools. But we do use feathers and furs, and and this way honor um, the spirits um, of the birds and the woods or the wolf uh, who have given it its remain. Uh, and left this uh, this life. Uh, I don't know how to say it better in English. My mother language is Danish. That's <laughs> okay. Do. You're uh, very. You speak very well, actually. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> I'm like an American. Yeah, and then I, of course, I have fables. Um, I I love to work with the um, like birch. I can. Uh, this is one of my rebels. Actually, uh, there are two. I don't know if you can see. Them. I see. Nice. Yes, yeah. they're beautiful. And these are with uh, made with birch. Um, and this kind of birch is called uh, masur birch. Birch. Uh huh. And it's it's a kind of birch <coughs> that grow um, way up north. Um, to the borderline of where trees can grow. Mm -hmm. And um, to me, the birch tree represents um, the spirits, uh, no, the flame within the heart, the flame of the heart. Okay. And also uh, birch bark it is a bark uh, that can lit uh, with fire, whether it's wet or, or dry. Um, and it's so full of eager to live. And it's that it's the last tree growing up north by the tree border. Mm -hmm. And also, it's so eager to live, I used to say, that in the springtime, if you put your uh, head, your ear up to the trunk, you will be able to listen to the water coming up. It's almost like a source. You have can hear the water coming up inside the wood. Wow. Yeah, it's really wow. <laughs> it's and um, and this um, birch handles um, I have put um, I have combined with reindeer heads. Um, reindeer hide is what we use also for our drums. Can uh -huh. you see everything here? Yes. Yeah, yeah I can yeah. see it. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay. And and then uh, how is I that painted? painted? Yeah, it's painted. Uh, it's it's dyed with the um, this yellow root. That's very healthy. <laughs> <laughs> turmeric. <laughs> what? Turmeric. Turmeric. Yeah, exactly. And then it's painted with a little acrylic, and it's a symbol of an old uh, Sami sun uh, from the Sami people. And then it has feathers from white grouse who dances uh, in, during the mating time uh, in the north, probably also in Canada. I don't know, but um, but there's a lot of symbolism in this, and I I don't remember everything, but I wrote down the feeling of this is um, it's a mammoth bone, mm -hmm. and um, it's a lever like from the fire of the inner earth mm -hmm. and it's amber uh, mm -hmm. who catches the sun um, and it's a juniper uh, for a purification it's a purification plant and then um, also um, the birch this kind of birch have been 
growing under the midnight sun, which is really magical. Too. <laughs> How um, wonderful. Yeah. And can, do you have a website where people could buy some of those from you? Yes. Um, well, these I sell, they are actually for sale, the ones I showed. Uh, yes, we have the, the website uh, and we ship worldwide and uh, we, we don't have a put to basket uh, shop. People have to mail us um, from uh, shamandrums.com. Okay. That's our website. Yeah. Wow. Um, okay. And what's the website address? It's a uh, three times W and then it's shamandrums.com. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. yeah. So but, you're uh, making a lot of rattles now. And your husband's still yeah. making drums? What? And Eric's still making drums? Yeah, Eric is, is making drums. He is. Um, there's one over here on the uh, wall. The red and brown one? That's pretty. The red yeah. and brown one. He just made, made an incorporation um he he will make the hard work <laughs> and i do the more fine things sometimes like like i have uh, painted the one up here uh-huh oh and yeah see, i see uh -huh. yeah, behind me they're a little far away <laughs> yeah 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 and we have beautiful yeah they're just gorgeous thank you very much and then and what? Do you teach any workshops on building things like that for people to yeah, do we have their own? Teaching. We have been teaching um, uh, in drum, have had workshops over five days uh, in, in drum building uh, combined with the shamanic practice. Um, yes, we do. And then I have been teaching, uh, but this is more a woman's thing uh, in combining um, shamanism, the shamanic practice with the um a dance practice because oh. well that's another story julia <laughs> but, but the, i'm very i'm very passionate about uh the the woman the woman um the old uh, the ancient woman power and and how we have sort of suppressed it and how we can uh, restore it bring it back Good. because Good. it's all in our genes and it's uh it's in our DNA. We just have to awaken the slumbering power. <laughs> that's, but that, <laughs> yes, <laughs> but that's another story. Yes, that's a, that's, a, I'd love to have you come and give a workshop on that. Have you, yeah, I would love to. That'd you be can wonderful. Talk a little about it on the web page. Uh, because, yeah. Uh, and sometimes I, it's not something I should start talking about because when you start asking me, it's like a two hour talk. <laughs> you can ask me for another uh, talk about that because that's going to take time. Okay. Hours. Yeah, we'll do another thing about the dance th stuff. I can, I can show you a little more tools and, and uh, what I think or, and how I work with it. But okay. I don't know how much time. I'm not a good person with time. <laughs> We have still five minutes, so go ahead. Okay. Well, I can. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I can show you. I can show you like this one is um, also a new rattle. Uh huh. And it's a raven heart. <coughs> nice. And it has raven feathers. And nice. And I have the, the experience with Raven. I have had some road kills. And um, well, in this rattle, I also have um, Leva. Um, and then I have um, um, Leva as it's a mother stone. And it's because we have an expression in, in old Danish expression saying that she's really a raven mother which is uh, sort of a bitch <laughs> but, <laughs> but, uh, to my experience uh i have been when i find roadkill i have been finding like a raven 
and I will ravel over this bird and ask to use its remains. And then I've had experience with ravens, which uh, they have a very strong smell because they are, um, as it called, vulture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are vulture, and and the uh, and the smell is very harsh and very strong. But meeting the spirit of a a, a raven mother that was road killed made me so touched. I never had the feeling of a mother being so embracing like this bird. And and it made me cry and cry and cry, not because it, it was dead, because the, the, the spirit was so compassionate, passionate. I was dancing with a, a, a feather fan I made of it and, and because they are good for dancing also. And um, and um, and she was wrapping her her wings around me and, and embracing me, and, and I became I I totally switched to love the smell of raven. <laughs> it's, really, it's really strange what happens. And then um, yeah, but this one is a, is a, a raven heart raffle. Wow. And okay. The handle is uh, Unipa. And uh, uh -huh. like oh yeah, I see it. Raven foot also. Uh huh. Raven feathers. Wow, that is very cool. Yeah, and, and I have many experiences like this, and also like, well, with the birch we found some years ago, uh, lightning struck birch, and um, here's it's going to be a. Tors hammer. Oh, okay. Of lightning struck birds. Uh huh. I made these uh, little rebels once I heard that in Denmark and in Scandinavia it's illegal to use shamanism in hospices, for instance. You can't. Wow, really? Not going to because it's only the auto, um, yeah the medical care that uh, is allowed to do something. But some shamanic working people have been working in hospitals and hospices uh, mm -hmm. having a little matchbox in the pockets uh, so they could rattle to the people who was about oh, to. Okay. So I made little, um, little rattles. Uh, that's cool. I, I, I call it the undercover model. <laughs> undercover model <laughs> yeah, like, because it's um yeah you can have it around the neck and you can have it in your purse and it's it's little <laughs> yeah so it could be a necklace and then you can use it when you need it <laughs> undercover <laughs> that's great yeah but but to, to, to use the time the best way it's um uh, one of the most amazing thing about working with these things is that every everything I do is a new challenge, and I love doing it. And um, and then um, I love the synchronicity that uh, appears. Like if I work on special order, mm -hmm. I feel I'm as I said, I'm a, a tool to the spirit. I'm, though I'm not always uh, aware what comes first, my idea or uh, a customer calling. Like um, I have been walking around for the few last few days uh, with clay uh, and wanting to make little Mother Earth, Earth figurines that I also make. Mm -hmm. uh, a copy of the old fertility uh, goddess uh, mm -hmm. um, Venus of Villandor. I, uh -huh. I I make them like whoop, 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 and then they're there. <laughs> the time I made it, it, it was like, wow, I'm sure I made her many thousand years ago. But and then I had a dream about her that uh, and how she disappeared from a tribe and was really amazing. Um, but the last couple of days I have been wanting to make her, and then two women have called me and ask for these figurines and I have not had time to make them for the past three years. And, and now and then, all of a sudden you're being called to make them. Yeah. 
so I have to make some. And uh, then I I have this amazing experience that uh, I sometimes get completely free hands in, in making tools for people. And uh, one woman wanted me to make a, um, a revel. Only she wa needs, only thing she wished was it should be blue and then it, uh, the handle should be a Popeye. And then I was walking in the wood and I found the piece of Popeye and I made this revel. And during the process, I saw seeds of dandelion kept flying through in my inner vision. Uh -huh. so I ended up taking a toothpick and painting little fluffy dandelion seeds that were flying around her rebel. Uh -huh. And then when she got the rebel, she sent me her, her personal card, which was uh, not blue, but yellow card with dandelion seeds. Oh my goodness. Well, it was, uh, and, and to me, it was really wow. <laughs> yeah, because you yeah. picked up on that. Yeah. That yeah. is so cool. Mm -hmm. Well, Suzanne, our time is up. Yes. And I want to thank you for being on the show. Yeah. And hopefully you can come to Colorado next summer. I've loved it. <laughs> I have been in the States, but it's many years ago. That was in my teens also. Okay. But, but thank you for inviting me, Julia. It was been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Yeah.